Hello students, welcome to all of you Shiksha 360. And today basically we have to discuss the JIB PPB topic, chapter number 13, part two. Clear in the previous session, basically we have discussed regarding the chapter number 13, part one. And basically with this session, we have to cover the chapter. Clear, basically we have to cover this session. So let's start chapter number 13, part two, that is banker special relationship. So under that basically we have discussed the garnish order. Clear, so garnish order basically it is the order basically which we have obtained basically from the court clear basically which we have obtained basically from the court clear so now let's discuss some of the important points regarding the garnish order so what are the do's and don'ts under the garnish order clear what the bank basically do's and don'ts under the garnish order first one is payment of checks clear first one is payment of checks clear so in case of cash payment of checks clear basically in case of Cash payment of checks clear basically if the order is received after the debit to the account clear basically in the case of cash payment of checks basically if the order is received after debit to the account clear basically after debit to the account but before the payment of the cash clear basically after debit to the account but before the payment of the cash better course would be to refuse the payment clear better course basically would be to refuse the payment with appropriate reason clear basically with appropriate reason indicated for the non payment clear so if the account is debited clear but payment is not given clear so basically we have to refuse the payment clear that is the appropriate reason basically indicated for the non payment clear so in the case of checks received in the clearing clear in the case of checks received in the clearing if the order is received before the stipulated returning time of clearing clear that is the amount is to be credited in the account clear or debited from the account and credited into the another account clear then the check must be returned clear so basically they have to put a hold on that clear so if the transfer of amount basically is done internally in another account the credit can be cancelled and the check to be returned unpaid clear provided the other customer has not been advised of the credit clear provided the other customer has not been advised of the credit clear so this is the first condition regarding the payment of the check clear very very important and you have to ask your doubt clear if you have any doubt regarding that so you can ask your doubt side by side clear so this is the payment of the check next one is right to set off clear right to set off that is basically you have to debit another account of the customer clear if any one of the account basically goes into np so basically you have to debit another account of the same customer clear if there is balance in that clear so that is basically we can say that that is the the right to set off clear that is basically comes under the right to set off so when the bank has a prior right to set off then the bank is not bound by the garnish order clear basically when a bank has a prior right to set off then the bank is not bound to by the garnish order clear so where lien is marked on fixed deposit receipts clear so it cannot be attached by a garnish order clear because first authority basically it is on the bank clear basically to recover their money clear so basically lien is marked like basically there is a loan against the fixed deposit clear basically loan against the fixed deposit clear so basically where lien is marked basically on the fixed deposit sheets it cannot be attached by a garnish order clear it cannot be attached by a garnish order however the fact of right to set off has been intimated to court and the order must be vacated clear and the order must be vacated clear so basically you basically the fact of right to set off clear that is intimated to the court that, and the order must be vacated clear it should be noted that any excess over the lien marked is attachable by the garnish order like we can say that basically person has fixed deposit of rupees 8 lakh and against fixed deposit basically person has taken the loan of 6 lakh clear so basically after 6 months clear we can say that basically this amount basically becomes 6 lakh 30 thousand clear and a garnish order is received of rupees 3 lakh that is bank has to put clear so basically first of all basically bank will recover their money and the rest amount clear basically will be attached under the garnish order clear basically attached under the garnish order clear so this is the right to set off clear this is comes under the right to set off clear first one is payment of check second one is right to set off third one uncleared effects and subsequent credits in account clear uncleared effects and subsequent credit in accounts clear so credit receives subsequent to garnish order are not attachable clear basically credit received subsequent to garnish order are not attachable because debts due 
or occurring at the time of receipt of order are only attachable. Okay, debts due or occurring at the time of receipt of order only are attachable. Okay, rest are not attachable. Okay, however, in cases where there is an agreement for withdrawal by the customer of unrealized credit. Such amounts are attachable. Clear? Basically, however, basically where there is an agreement, basically for withdrawal by the customer, basically for unrealized credit. So such amounts are attachable. Clear? So in that case, basically such amounts are attachable. The portion of loan facilities not yet drawn, clear, cannot be considered as money. Clear? The portion of loan, like basically, person is taking a housing loan of twenty five lakh. Clear? Till now only fifteen lakh it is to be. Taken clear, ten lakh is not taken clear. So basically, it is not considered as money. Clear, as it does not constitute a debt at all, and as such cannot be garnished. Clear, or even it is comes not under the garnish. Clear. So basically, only that portion of the loan facilities clear will be taken which has the customer avail. Clear, basically, which the customer avail. Clear. So what is the meaning of that? Basically, like there is ten lakh is available for disbursement. So basically. If there is any attachment order, clear, basically from uh, garnish order from the court, clear. So it does not mean that basically you can disperse this amount to follow that order, clear. You can disperse this account to follow that order. This is not the thing, clear. This is not the thing, clear. So that's why they can say that basically uncleared effects and subsequent credits in the account, clear. Uncleared effects and subsequent credits basically in the account, clear. Next one is the joint account clear. Next one is the joint account clear. So basically, when the garnish order is in a single name clear, basically when the garnish order is in a single name and the customer account basically it is in joint names clear, basically and the customer account basically it is in the joint name that is husband and wife, two brothers, mother and daughter or two friends clear. So with the operation clause either or survival clear. So the money lies in such account basically cannot be attached. Clear the money lies lies clear. Here the very very important thing like what is the operation on the account? Clear what is the operation in the account? Clear whether it is basically either or survivor or jointly or basically former or survivor. Clear. So what is the name? Clear. However, if the amount is payable to former or survivor, clear basically if the amount is payable to former or survivor, clear so it can be attached. Even to the garnish order, if is in the former's name only, like we can say that basically former or survivor clear, and there is a garnish order in the name of the former clear. So basically, in that case, basically that amount it is to be attached clear. This is because the money is a debt due and occurring to the former in his lifetime, and the survivor only basically after the death of the former clear. So, so the survivor basically it is only. Survive basically survivor has the target basically only after the death of the former clear only after the death of the former clear so these are some of the basic things regarding that so basically we have discussed till now four points payment of checks right to set off uncleared effects and subsequent subsequent credits in the account fourth one is the joint account clear fourth one here that is the joint account fifth one trust account clear fifth one here it is the trust account that is the outstanding amount basically in a trust account cannot be attached if the judgment debtor has deposited the money as a trustee. Clear basically the outstanding amount basically in a trust account cannot be attached basically if the judgment debtor clear basically has deposited the money. Clear basically if the judgment debtor basically has deposited the money as a trustee. Clear basically has deposited the money as a trustee. Clear so in that case basically that amount it cannot be attached. Clear basically that amount it cannot be attached. Sixth one is the partnership accounts. Clear. Sixth one is the partnership accounts. So the personal account of a partner. Clear. The personal account of a partner can be attached for the forms debt. Clear. The personal account of a partner basically can be attached for the forms debt. Clear. Because partners are liable for that particular form. Clear. Because partners are jointly and severally liable basically for the forms debt. Clear. Nevertheless, the form account cannot be attached for individual debts of the farmer. Clear. Basically. The reverse of that thing, it is not true. Clear, basically, for the firm's debts, clear, the personal account of the partners can be attached. Clear, but the firm account cannot be attached, basically, for the individual debts of the partners. Clear, for the individual debts of the partners. Clear. Next one is the liquidator. Clear, so liquidator, basically, that is basically when a company 
winding up clear so when the company basically it is the judgment adapter clear so an order basically atta attaching the accounts of the liquidator cannot be passed as the money does not belong to the company basically but to the liquidator clear so when the company basically it is a judgment debtor so an order attaching the accounts of the liquidator cannot be passed clear basically cannot be passed as the money does not belong to the company basically but to the liquidator clear but to the liquidator and next one when the garnish order does not name the customer correctly clear or with the sufficient accuracy to enable the bank to identify the account basically in its books in that case the bank is not bound to act upon it and is not responsible for passing checks till the order is amended clear clear so basically when the garnish order clear that is basically name of the customer is not properly or basically it is not accurately so that basically we can easily identify clear to enable the bank to identify the account in its books so the bank is not bound to act upon it clear the bank is not bound to act upon it and is not responsible for checking passing checks till the order is amended clear and it is not responsible basically for passing checks till the order is amended clear next one is in case where the customer basically is having more than one account in the bank's branch clear and one is in the debit and another is in the credit balance clear so the net result if in credit can be attached clear like one basically in one account basically it is debit balance in the another account basically it is in the credit balance clear so basically if the net amount in both of the accounts basically comes out to be credit balance clear basically comes out to be credit balance so then in that case clear so then in that case basically it can be attached clear so the order will not attach only the credit balance account clear but if the debit balance basically it is in a loan account clear which has not been called by the bank on the date of the service order so credit into another account basically cannot be adjusted clear that is basically till now basically there is not any installment due clear so basically it is not like that basically you have to pay the amount in that clear so basically credit into another account basically cannot be adjusted in that case clear credit into another account basically cannot be adjusted so please tell fast basically up to this much point it is clear to all of you regarding what are the do's and don'ts please tell fast please respond up to this much point it is clear to all of you why i am discussing all these points because you will definitely get question basically from these points basically in the examination clear definitely you will find basically questions from these points in the examination clear either one or two questions clear you will definitely find clear from this chapter and that is very very important and easy questions clear just straightforward questions they will ask in the examination just you have to understand the theory or remember so the bank cannot appropriate the credit balance basically towards the contingent liabilities of the customers when a garnish order is a sub clear basically when a garnish order is a sub clear so cannot appropriate the credit balance clear towards the contingent liabilities of the customer clear basically when a garnish order is served clear that is basically they cannot take the money clear basically to clear their loans clear so the balance is basically held outside india clear balance is basically held outside india cannot be attached clear basically in the garnish order basically the balance is basically held outside india cannot be attached clear so the wap rules basically also apply to the attachment orders issued by the income tax officers under the income tax act 1961 clear the wap rules also apply to the attachment orders issued by the income tax officers clear that is basically issued by the income tax officers under the income tax act 1961 clear basically under the income tax act 1961 clear so the attachment order basically under this act lays down certain procedure regarding the recovery of tax basically from the cessee in default clear like we can say that basically i will share one incident basically with all of you we are basically a bank employee i am sharing a like please tell fast basically how many of you have filed their return yourself clear basically file their return yourself please tell fast how many of you basically file your return yourself clear that is you can file your return individually or yourself so there are like one or two student basically say that i will file their return clear so i will basically share one incident basically with you basically one of the bank employee filed their return basically in the year 2016 clear basically they they file the return and they get their amount back clear 
but there is some mistake in that return clear basically but there is some mistake in that return but we know that basically we will get our refund so basically we will say that we will think that everyone is correct clear same thing happens to that person in the year 2017 again clear the person basically will file the return they will get the money back or their funds back clear similarly in the 2018 also clear so but every time basically they will do one mistake like basically in the year 2016 basically they have done mistake they file their return in that way basically we can say that basically tax is actually it is 45000 but the way in which they filled they give only 20000 rupees tax and rest 25000 rupees basically they are not able to pay clear so every time basically income tax basically on their portal basically they show that basically this amount is to be pending clear for re basically under the tax clear for that specific year but the person is not that much aware only that one thing basically they remember that if they get their return back on time that is money gets back return on time so it means that everyone is filled properly clear so basically after three years they will find that they will not they basically even after three years clear basically when they will know that basically their their return is not properly filled that is basically when they get less refund from the income tax clear basically then when they will get a basically less return from the income and that basically it is mentioned that basically you have to pay the penalty that is penalty and the tax amount basically already deducted from that refund clear from that refund clear so in some cases basically here there is money available that's why basically they will deduct the money clear but in some cases basically there is money not available clear there are funds are not available clear so what they will do in that case clear so what they will do in that case clear so hope it is clear to all of you basically what i am trying to say that clear so similarly under the section 226 clear please remember this section they have already asked question clear basically under which section clear the income tax officer basically may file the return clear sorry may give a notice clear so under section 226 one of that the income tax officer basically may buy a notice in writing Call upon any person, clear, basically call upon any person, basically including a banking company from whom money is due, clear, basically call upon any person, basically including a banking company, basically from whom money is due or money become due to the assessee, clear, basically from whom money is due or money become due to the assessee or any person, clear, basically from whom money is due or may become due, basically to the assessee or any person who holds or may subsequently hold money clear basically who holds or may subsequently hold money for or on account of the assessee to pay to the income tax officer clear or may subsequently basically hold money for or on account of the assessee clear or on account of the assessee to pay to the income tax officer clear to pay to the income tax officer either immediately or upon the money becoming due clear or on the money becoming due so much of the money as is a sufficient to satisfy the tax due basically from the SSC clear to satisfy the tax due from the SSC clear so much of the money basically as is sufficient to satisfy the tax due basically from the SSC clear to satisfy the tax due basically from the SSC clear so these are the some of the important things which you have to remember clear basically which you have to remember So the order of the I2 clear basically the order of the income tax officer basically what may attach any debt due and payable debts due clear first one is any debt due and payable second one is basically debt due that are due basically but not payable basically on the date of the ship of the notice clear that is debt due basically like basically after every 30 days clear that is after every 30 days that is you have to pay the installment note before that clear that is the same thing there interest is to be charged on daily basis clear but payable basically after one month clear after the one month clear so that is the same thing they are saying that debts due basically but not payable on the date of the ship of the notice any amount received subsequently clear any amount received subsequently clear so any balance lying in a joint account clear basically can also be attached clear basically any balance basically lying in a joint account can also be attached clear even though a notice basically it is issued on a single account clear even though basically a notice basically it is issued on a single account clear 
so the shares of the joint account holder clear in such account shall be presumed to be equal unless the contrary is proved clear so in the joint account holder clear they can assume that clear presumed to be equal clear that is to be equal unless the contrary is proved clear unless the contrary is proved clear so these are the some important things which you have to remember regarding the garnish order clear basically which you have to remember regarding the garnish order clear now move to the next thing that is the banker's lien clear banker's lien clear this question basically i find in the examination in 2019 2020 and 2021 clear every year basically they have asked regarding the banker's lien clear like basically what type of like basically in the fixed deposit clear what we have to mark clear that is basically the it is not paid clear till the debt is to be repaid clear that is basically lien is marked on the fixed deposit clear lien is marked basically on the fixed deposit clear so basically lien is the right of the banker basically to retain possession of the goods and securities clear basically owned by the debtor until the debt due basically from the later is paid clear like we can say that in the case of the gold clear basically we will not mark the lien clear basically we will not mark the lien on the gold like basically we will mark the lien on the fixed deposit clear so gold basically that is basically gold ornament that is basically pledge in that basically what we have to do pledge clear so please remember these things you will find these questions in the examination like basically i have already told you in september 2021 clear this question they have already asked clear like lean on fixed deposit clear like lean on fixed deposit so basically bankers acquires the right to sell the goods clear basically which came into his possession in the ordinary course of banking business clear in case the debt is not paid clear in case the debt is not paid clear so basically banker has the right a banker acquires the right basically to sell the goods basically which came into possession basically that is in the ordinary course of the banking business in case the debt is not paid clear further section 171 of the indian contract act 1872 clear section 171 of basically of the indian contract act 1872 gives to the banker an absolute right clear basically gives to the banker basically an absolute right of journal lien on all goods and securities basically received by the banker clear so as per basically section 171 clear please remember that basically as per section 171 of the Indian contract 1872 clear basically it gives the right to the banker or an absolute right clear basically of journal lien on all goods and securities basically received by the banker clear on all goods and securities basically that is to be received by the bank however basically when a customer clear inadvertently leaves a packet basically containing certain share containing certain share certificates life insurance policies fixed deposit slips of other banks etc clear while leaving the bank premises clear basically while leaving the bank premises the banker will have no right of lien over those securities clear so in that case the banker will have no right of lien clear in that case basically the banker will have no right of lien basically over those securities because they were not given to the banker basically in the normal course of banking business clear because they were not given to the banker basically in the normal course of the banking business clear so please remember all these things clear so basically where lien is to be applicable and where basically garnish order is to be applicable clear so these are the very very important things basically for the examination and in the upcoming session basically we will discuss all these questions once again clear in the form of the question clear so basically where a right can apply clear that is basically this right can apply clear to sell a banker's journal lien basically gives the right to sell the debtor's property clear basically to sell the debtor's property clear so to sell and to a specific person or against the customer clear to basically to a specific person clear so the right under section 171 is not given only to the banker clear basically it is not given only to the bankers but also to the factors war fingers attorneys of high courts and policy brokers clear and as such basically no separate agreement is to be required clear and as such no separate agreement is to be required clear so factors i think all of you are aware regarding basically what is factoring please tell fast basically how many of you know regarding what is factoring okay so factoring basically it is a way like basically we can say that 
third party basically will pay the amount clear basically we will discuss in detail clear i will take one special session on the factoring clear very very important clear next one is basically where a right can apply basically to sell to a specific person next one is against the customer clear basically against the customer clear so the right is exercised basically on the goods and securities of the customer only clear so basically we are like basically we can say that basically if it is a at in any account clear the person is basically we can say that like grantor clear so in that case basically we cannot do that clear so basically the rights is exercised only basically on the goods and securities basically of the customer clear the right is exercised basically on the goods and securities of the customer only clear so the right cannot be exercised clear basically the right cannot be exercised basically when the debtor has a joint account clear the right cannot be exercised clear that is in banker's lien right clear the right cannot be exercised basically when the debtor has a joint account clear basically when the debtor has a joint account clear so basically we can discuss where a right can apply clear and where it is not apply clear basically where it cannot apply please remember that also on the safe custody basically it is not applicable or documents or money deposited basically for the specific purposes basically it is not applicable like you have deposited basically or you have a fixed deposit against that basically you have a bank grant clear so way like that is basically for one specific purpose clear for one specific purpose clear just here i am giving just to you the examples clear to understand this terminology is clear third one is basically articles left negligible negligently in the bank premises or fourth one is immature debts fifth one is the stolen goods and sixth one is the basically no simultaneously right to banks clear no simultaneously right to bank clear so now let's discuss one by one what is the meaning of all these things clear safe custody articles clear so basically when a customer deposits securities ornaments and all other valuables basically for their safe custody basically with the banker so the later acts as a trustee or bailey clear so in that case the later acts as a trustee or bailey therefore the bank cannot exercise the right of liens unless covered by a special agreement clear like basically we can say that basically there is a locker clear we don't know basically what they are kept here clear basically what they are kept here clear like in the safe custody clear so here basically banker acts as a trustee or bailey clear so the banker cannot exercise the right of lien clear basically unless it is covered by a special agreement clear general basically it will not cover under the right okay now move to the documents basically money documents or money basically deposited for the specific purposes clear documents or money deposited clear basically with the specific purpose cannot be taken under lien clear basically cannot be taken under lien next one basically articles left negligently basically in the bank premises clear so such articles or securities basically cannot be taken under lien clear cannot be taken under lien clear the fourth one is the immature debts clear fourth one is the immature debts clear so lien cannot be exercised clear basically lien cannot be exercised when the debt has not that matured clear basically lien cannot be exercised basically when the debt has not that matured clear like the bank discounts a 90 day treasury bill clear basically for 90 days bill discounts a 90 days bill for rupees 50000 maturity on 11th 17th of number 2004 clear could not be have a lien over it before its maturity date clear basically they cannot have mark a lien over it before its maturity date clear only basically when there is a demand of the money clear only basically when there is a demand of the money they can do or keep a lien on it clear otherwise before that they has not any authority to mark lien on that clear next one is basically stolen goods clear if the customer has stolen goods or securities of the real owner and delivers them to the bank clear so the bank cannot have lien over it clear basically the bank cannot have lien over it also the transaction has taken place basically in the ordinary course of business clear if the bank know that basically these are the stolen goods in that bank will not take on any lien clear or mark any lien clear even that transaction is to be carried out in the ordinary course of the business clear basically in the ordinary course of the business clear. next one is basically no simultaneously right to bank clear no simultaneously right to banks clear so when the right of set off basically it is applicable to the bank lien cannot be applied clear so basically in the case of they can uh, sometimes basically they can ask basically which of the following right has more priority clear so basically among and bank cannot apply apply basically both the rights clear 
so basically when the rights of set off is available clear basically it has more priority clear when the right of set off is available basically to the bank lien right cannot apply clear so among the right to set off and lien basically which is more powerful that is basically right to set off basically right of set off basically it is more powerful with respect to that clear so these two rights basically cannot be exercised simultaneously at the same time clear so these two rights basically cannot be exercised simultaneously at the same time clear simultaneously at the same time clear so these are the different points regarding the banker's lien clear regarding the banker's lien clear so all these points are very very important for examination point of view and in this session basically we have to discuss up to this much point clear so in the next session only one point is left that is right of set off and their essential feature clear and their essential feature clear basically which we have to discuss in the next session clear basically which we have to discuss in the next session just basically here basically we will discuss the definition what is the right of set off so it is the right of the debtor clear basically to take into account a debt owing to him basically by a creditor clear creditor like basically we consider creditor just you can consider it as a bank this is a debt customer so basically when claiming a debt basically due from him basically to the creditor clear so right set off is the right of a debtor basically to take into account a debt owing to him by a creditor clear when claiming a debt basically due from him to the creditor clear so in the case of a banker the right of set off basically enables him to adjust a debit balance in the customer accounts with any balance outstanding basically to his credit in the books of a bank clear so basically if the person has multiple accounts so the customer basically the bank will debit another account of that customer clear so in other words the banker can adjust his claim basically from the account that is payable to the customer clear so in other words basically we can say that basically the banker can adjust his claim clear the banker can adjust his claim basically from the amount account amount that is payable to the customer clear that that is payable to the customer clear so this is the introduction of the right to set up clear right of set up clear so hope it is clear to all of you basically what we have discussed till now so thanks to all of you for joining this session and in the next session basically we will discuss some another important points along with the questions clear and we will also upload clear basically within one or two days basically we will also start uploading of mcqs basically in the telegram group for the practice purpose so thanks to all of you for joining this session